Imagine a town that once thrived as a bustling stop for stagecoaches, filled with travelers, merchants, and a lively spirit that kept its streets humming with energy. Then, imagine this same town fading into near obscurity, left out of the industrial revolution's sweeping changes, almost as if time forgot it. This is Daventry. It's here that the BBC once chose to set up their groundbreaking radio transmitters and where radar technology first took form, putting Daventry on the world map with one of the most important scientific experiments in history. So why, despite these brushes with fame, did Daventry seem to slip into the shadows? What happened to this town that once resonated with the call of Daventry calling? Arriving in Daventry for an afternoon stroll, I wasn't holding my breath for surprises. This wasn't my first visit. I'd been here once before on business, and this time I was here with no agenda other than to wander through the historic market town. The 2021 census tells us Daventry's home to around 28,123 people. And as I settled in, I got the distinct feeling this place wore its size modestly both a blessing and a limitation. A classic British rain was there to greet me, even in midsummer. According to local lore, Daventry has Viking roots, with its name once pronounced Daintree, sparking images of a Dane tree. These days, though, experts argue the name probably stems from Anglo-Saxon origins, meaning Dafa's tree. Either way, the town's history stretches back Daventry having earned its mention in the Domesday Book of 1086 as Daventry. The town's market square was my first stop, though the rain clouds still lingered overhead. The Yellowstone Church of Holy Cross stood stoic, a peculiar structure in a style less Gothic and more Georgian, distinct from the typical English parish churches closed, unfortunately, just like the town hall, a building crafted from similar stone. The Burton Memorial in the square, however, left me stumped. I spent a good few moments trying to decipher its purpose, yet its meaning remained an enigma. The High Street, like countless others across the UK, was home to the same familiar brands you'd find in any town but there was a charm in its Victorian-era architecture. The historic core of Daventry is actually a conservation area, with many buildings dating from the 17th to 19th centuries. Walking down Sheaf Street, I stumbled upon a gem I didn't expect, a bookshop called Suddenly on Sheaf Street. This quirky, almost poetic name was an oasis for a reader like me, surrounded by the repetitive rhythm of chain stores. I stepped inside and was greeted by shelves of carefully curated books, each one seeming to carry a bit of Daventry's understated spirit. There's an unexpected brush with fame here too. Daventry earned a mention from Shakespeare himself in the play Henry IV, referring to the red-nosed innkeeper of Daventry. It's said Shakespeare would have been familiar with the town, given its proximity to his birthplace, Stratford-upon-Avon. This tidbit makes it easy to imagine him passing through Daventry on one of those many coaching roads that once linked the town with London, the West Midlands, and Lancashire. During the Georgian era, these roads brought prosperity as Daventry became a bustling coaching town though that fortune faded as the town missed the Industrial Revolution's boom due to a lack of transport connections. Finally, I walked up Borough Hill, where in 1925, the BBC set up a transmitting station that once broadcast the famous call, Daventry Calling. The station even became a crucial part of radio history when, in 1935, it was used for the first practical demonstration of radar called Daventry Experiment, a breakthrough by Robert Watson Watt. 
it felt surreal to stand here and think about how these fields once held a world's worth of wonder, sending signals across England, even to distant continents. As my one-hour parking began to near its end, I took one last look at the town, still bathed in the light rain that had accompanied me since my arrival. Daventry was steady and unpretentious, a place that's not out to impress. I left with a sense of quiet satisfaction, having found the little things that make Daventry Daventry, a town whose past in all its simplicity is still very much alive, even if it chooses not to shout about it. Heading towards Southam, I wondered if a smaller town would offer more surprises. As it turned out, Southam's own historic finds and charming inns were refreshingly unexpected, a lovely contrast to Daventry's quiet restraint. <laughs>